Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, I have to say, everyone is out. School is also out, too. So, um, and I wouldn't say all schools, but some. Uh, I don't keep tabs on what's going on in the school system. Oh, my God. My blasted cat laid on my coat. Well, it's okay. It's a good luck charm. Especially from my cat. So. It's not that cold. I just like the scarf. I like having my neck covered. So. <clears throat> uh... My fear has been confirmed. If you've watched the video before this one, a lot of people are having holiday depression. Well, seasonal depression. The clinical term is seasonal depression. And it's usually pretty prevalent between, um, as I said in the first video, the video before this one, Halloween all the way to... I want to say Valentine's Day. It's... I, I think it's pretty obvious as to why and what triggers it. <clears throat> These holidays represent and celebrate family, friends, love and these are all things that if you have it you're blessed you're lucky and you're doing pretty good for yourself but if you don't have any of those things a lot of people suffer now there are some people that thrive off being alone those are introverts or a different terminology is recluse no not the spider <clears throat> but, um, yeah, um, oh, my neck. So, everything is doing better. I am lucky and fortunate enough. Fingers crossed that <clears throat> everything that is popping off, um, it, um, you know, it, it just, it seems to be doing okay. I don't want to jinx it. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> so, what this video is going to be about is, basically, our opinions matter and yet they don't. Opinions are like butts, and this is the, this is the best way I can explain it. Opinions are like butts. It either may look nice, but to someone, somewhere, your opinion is going to be the very thing that comes out of a butt. To someone, somewhere. Now, to those of you that have a problem with handling other people's opinion, look. Your opinion about someone else's opinion doesn't really have to matter to you. If you don't like it, oh well. You don't have to like everything and everyone. Let's just be honest. If there is no pleasing someone, or if they seem to bother you, and you just don't know why, and you don't want to hear their voice and all that, 
You gotta learn to cope, princess. Look, I used to be a... What do you call them now? What do they call them now? Hmm. A keyboard warrior. When I was 13 years old. Yeah. First got on the interwebs. Yeah. I... Basically, I, w I lived kind of like a somewhat sheltered um, life until I got the internet and started poking around, talking to people all over the world. Um, I realized that there is more, to more than one opinion than my mom and dad's and people at school. So, um, I had trouble handling that. And I used to feel like my way was right because my parents' way was right. Because I was told their way was right. And then as I got older, I started forming my own opinions. So, yeah. I learned that if you don't like someone's opinion, oh well. It's not going to change. Unless they either A see a common uh, view and they see it a different way. Now if you tell them your point of view and they think about it, you are talking to an open-minded person. If you're talking to someone about your view and your opinion, chances are it will be A, considered, B, rejected nicely or harshly, or C, they'll have a meltdown and they don't like your opinion, but you don't like their opinion. Well, just agree that, hey, your opinion, my opinion, it doesn't have to match. I am friends and I am, I know I'm prideful about this and, you know, I don't see why I shouldn't be about this because this is where I'm, a, I'm very pr I pride myself in. I pride myself in having many different friends from many, many years. We, the oldest relationship, friendship, I have had, well, I have going now strong is, let's say, uh, let's see. I want to say 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 years. I have a friendship going on for 19 years. How many of you can say that? And this person, we don't feel and think the same way when it comes to politics, religion, and life choices. But, by God, if I need someone to talk to and I need a friend who I trust, it's that person. And if they feel that, if they're going through something, it's me. They come to me. At least, I hope they come to me. The thing is, us working and being different time zones... I have two friends that I've been friends with, I want to say confidently, for like ever since I was like you know, 19, 20 years. They live in another country. Um, the thing is, I don't constantly talk to them every day, and, and they understand, you know, life happens. I have a job, there's time zone differences, and I also have a life over here. Now, I can tell you that I'm friends with all kinds of people of different nationalities, religions, life choices, what have you, what have you not. The only ones I can't seem to get along with are people that are radically religious. Now, that, that can be any religion. 
there's a lot of radicals in any different kind of religion. Now, because we, I've sat them down. I said, "Hey, we may be different, but that doesn't mean we don't have, we don't need, we don't, we can't be friends." Because you have a special place in my heart. I would hate to see you go, but if you cannot move past on the differences between me and you, that's you. If you want to leave, leave, but this is me. Take me as I am because I've taken you as you are. And most people have embraced that and love that about me. Uh, yeah, I've had, I've, I got friends that just, it, I have friends where when I used to date, um, people were like, are you dating that person? No, they, they're across the country. How? I tried the long distance thing. It didn't work out. I thought it did. And it ended up blowing up in my face. So, because, you know, I don't, I refuse to debate and I refuse to argue and I refuse to judge because my time and energy goes to other things and they know this. Now, I used to have friends that constantly were very demanding on my time and my attention. I'm just like, okay, look, honey, honey bunches of oats, listen, I got this, 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 and this to go, going on, and um, you're not the only friend I have, so I try to touch base with anyone and everyone that I care about just to see how they're doing, because I want them to know if I'm hitting you up and saying, hey, how are you, what, how is life, it means I think about you, I think about everyone all the time, basically, I think about you, and I care about you, and I worry. I don't worry about everyone. Life is not easy. Life is not kind all the time. But given the circumstances of life, if someone ever needs to talk to me, I'm, I'm here. Even though I may not reply all the time to everything that is sent to me or texted to me or PM'd to me or commented on, I, I let people know in the best way I can that, hey... I see you. I'm not ignoring you. So, if I can have all these different people in my life, why is it so hard for other people to cope and embrace people's differences? I think the fact that human beings are so different, it's the most beautiful thing ever because not one person is alike. And if you think you got someone figured out, look out, they're gonna change. Whether in a second, microsecond, nanosecond, minute, hour, day, I mean, it, whether it be an internal or external stimuli, Something changes. So, with that being said, why would you change someone? Why would you think that you are better than someone to the point where you want to change them to be like you or to whatever your ideal of perfect human being is? No one is perfect. Nothing is perfect. And even if people say, oh... What a perfect day. It's perfect for you, but it may not be perfect for the other person. Perception is what divides us. And the only way we can thrive on perception is just accept it. Now, if you can't stand something and something does not feel right with you, Learn from it, study it, don't dwell on it. You just take a moment to study it and figure out why it's not driving with you. Lord knows, me being a, an empath, I've learned to control it very well to the point where I damn near shut it off at times, especially when I'm out in public. 
I um I can tell when when someone says something to me it's not if it doesn't drive with me if it doesn't click or if it or if it like raises a red flag on my on me I'm just like why did that not drive with me why and I read energy because if their words aren't jiving and their body language isn't jiving then it's probably energy it may not very well be me it may not be anyone in their general vicinity it could be something going on at home now when I'm at work I turn it off I turn it off unless someone is trying to tell me something and I'm not understanding it and I'm just like uh -huh, what? say what who because sometimes I'm gonna be honest my words they don't project well speaking um, I've gone so long with talking without speaking if that makes any sense for those of you that understand supernatural metaphysical science and blah 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 it's talking up here if I'm around my mom or my family members or my sister or my husband even he's he is a damn good empath. He's better than me. And he works for the state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, I don't know. Because the, the stuff I feel on him, like um, the, the energy when he comes home from work, it's like, ugh, you reek of desperation and fear and depression. Fuck off. But as soon as he, t as soon as he takes his um, uniform off and all that, it's like, oh, there you are, my beautiful human. I don't know how he does it. He's a stronger one than I am. tricky thing is he's never been trained and taught. He's self-taught. And he's pretty amazing at candle magic too. He's better at it than me. And I've practiced it since I was freaking 11. I have other things I'm good at. Well, anyways, I digress. Um... thing is I'm when I'm around those people that I've grown up with or I have a really strong and adamant connection with I just know it's it's like we're not talking but it's like it's like we know it's like you just know you, you know <laughs> it's like all of a sudden you get hungry and then uh, you start cooking something and they're like oh I was hungry too I was just thinking about coming in here and cooking this I'm like I don't know I know <laughs> I've done that plenty of times I'll be making let's say uh, beef stroganoff or something like that just a random thing and I'll call my mom and my mom will be like, oh, I was just thinking about you. She's like, what you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm cooking some beef stroganoff. She's like, oh, me too. I'm like, okay. Or um, I'll be cooking something. Here's a here's a really intricate one. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be doing something and I'll be cooking something very precise like um, Salisbury steaks with green beans, corn, and, you know, be talking to her she's like oh that's exactly what we had I'm like the fuck okay get out of my head so we all have that capability it's just whether or not you can handle it so when you are judging someone's opinion or views 
it doesn't really make any sense to judge someone for something so personal and so different and diverse as an opinion and a thought and a perception. Because to me, the sky is grayish blue. More so gray and white. For someone else, someone could say it's, it's overcast. It's a slight blue. Or it's gray. It don't matter. It's a sky. It doesn't matter. It's not going to change the fact it's a sky. And it is what it is. Just like someone's opinion. It's an opinion. It is what it is. You don't have to adopt it. You don't have to embrace it. You don't have to do or feel or think anything of it. You can <clears throat> Sorry, you can walk away or you can use it for food for thought. Like, you know what? I didn't know that that was a perception. So that's a different view of looking at it. Hmm. So anyways, be safe, guys. Love and light to you all. And I wish, I wish, I wish we all have a really good day today.